is something I want to show you guys. So when I installed the JL Microsoft, the 12 inch border, I had originally ordered a cheap off the shelf from Amazon DS18 install kit. So they said it was, I knew it was CCA, um, but I didn't know enough about it at the time once I did some more reading. But what I was shocked about is this is not 8 gauge. This is probably 12 gauge wiring, right? Which is aluminum cladded copper in an 8 gauge well, sh thickness of the shield. Next to it, this is what I got from Crutchfield. It's a 10 gauge. You can actually see that's actually slightly thicker internal core. And then next to it, um, this is some excess power, actual 8 gauge um, copper, my right, true copper wiring I had from the my home theater system. So this CCA stuff, um, the reason for this warning out there, a lot of people might hate it, but I've got to warn you guys, this stuff is going to heat up. It doesn't have the same conductive properties as true copper, and it is not the actual gauge thickness. So if you ran this back right, 17 feet into the back of your vehicle from the battery, you've basically got yourself a fire hazard here. Because if I'm drawing the 30, true 30 amps, this thing's going to put out the equivalent of 10 amps of heat. And I got a, um, I've seen an example. This is what actually got me to look, research it. A guy had this cable melt. I had, uh, melted the carpet in the car. It didn't catch fire, but it actually melted and made a mess um, in the back of his trunk. This is, once again, the copper from Crut Crutchfield kit. It is actually a 10 gauge as it's supposed to be, and this is the actual 8 gauge wiring I use. Um, it is really 8 gauge. There's something to bear in mind. So, this cheap um, copper coated aluminum is something you would normally get from companies like DS18, Boss, and those cheap um, amp install kits, and they say it's going to work fine, but no, it's not. Alright, once again, this is not actually 8 gauge, it's more, you know, closer to 12, somewhere between 10 and 12 gauge. This is the actual 10 gauge, and this is 8 gauge. You can actually see, going left to right, the increase in the core diameter going across. And it does make a difference in the amount of power, if your device needs the power, because the GL Audio Sub recommended 8 gauge. And it was his recommendation, and it works fine with the real heat gauge. If I had put this stuff in, it's it's gonna it's gonna put out a lot of more heat than it should, because this cable doesn't even get warm; it stays cold. This one, you can actually feel it heating up. It gets really hot. So I just give you guys a warning with that. Make sure don't use anything copper coated. All right, use you know real copper, not copper coated aluminum. And make sure that you have something to compare it to. I mean, if I compare this stuff to some regular 14 gauge speak wire, it's almost the same. I don't have any 12 gauge. It's thicker than the 14 gauge, though. All right. So just a warning for you guys. Keep in mind, and also, which also was disappointing, the fuse. The fuse actually came with this was an 80 amp fuse. You've got 80 amp fuse on wiring that can't even transmit. I'm guessing it won't even get 50 amps before this thing through it before it melts. So you actually will have no actual protection in your vehicle. And the actual fuse holder, the fuse holder came with actually was really nice. And what I did, I changed out the fuse to 40 amp fuse, probably the correct fuse for what I'm pulling out on the other end. The um, JL Audio actually has a um, 30 amp fuse built into it, and the fuse is right next to the battery within 12 inches. So I shouldn't have any problem with that, but if I had an 80, the 80 amp that came with it in there, I mean, this wire can literally melt in kitchen fire before it did any, before you know that fuse tripped or oh, blew. Okay guys, I'm going to show you something in a minute. 
Okay, so what's going to go in the CRV next is the Kikuki. Key key. Um, this is the 50 watt per channel, so it's the key 200.4. Basically, four channel, 200 watts op main output. And this is RMS output at 1% um, distortion uh, spec guide. So, we just going to choose this for the CRV mainly because it easily incorporates into um, factory systems. The CRV head unit does not have a pre any preamp outs. Currently, it has the Honda, the Access Honda um, 2 harness on it, which the JL Audio sub was connected to. Now, for the kicker key, I'm going to bring this. The hope, my hope, is that I'm getting a little extra power, mostly to get the rest of the system to easier align with the subwoofer. The subwoofer is very, very powerful. Like I said, the gain is still set to zero, and it easily overpowers the stock system. I mean, I didn't expect it to overpower it that much with the gain so low. My guessing is because I'm using the high-level inputs on it, and hopefully I'll get the same results from the kicker. To connect it, I'm going to be using spade connectors. Uh, I chose spade connectors because if I ever have to do any servicing on it, it's just a unplug on all the cables. Um, for the rest of the install, it should go pretty easy. It's just to get the power cable run to the battery. And what I'm going to do, um, I do have the crush field install kit. I will put a 20 amp fuse in the crush field install kit um, within 12 inches of the battery. I will use the 20 amp fuse that came with it with the kicker and I'll keep it close. So actually it'll, this will act more like a fuse just for the amp and then the 20 amp close to the battery will act a fuse to protect the wiring. I mean, I see nothing wrong with double protection with, with dual fuses in line. If something pops, I'll, you know, I just, I will know where to check them both. And what's surprising me with this unit is this thing small. It is fairly small, and it's not as heavy as I thought it would be. I thought this thing would have some heft, and it doesn't. It's basically seven and a half by an inch and almost two inches by two and a half inches. I mean, this is going to fit very easily behind either behind the dash, and there's a location underneath the shift lever. Um, I'm thinking of duct tape, not duct taping, using tie straps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put four rubber feet so I'll get some lift off of it. And there's an AC duct under there. Easily tie strap it onto that. I'll have the rubber feet to keep it up. I'll probably put a couple spots here of double sided Velcro as well. So I'll make sure it stays in place. Shouldn't be an issue. Won't have any rattling, it'll be more than secure enough. And it shouldn't get any heat or anything because it's going to be on top of a cooling AC duct. This thing is actually tiny. This is the mic that comes with it. I'm not going to open it up just yet. Very simple mic. And inside here, with the wire, both wiring harnesses, is an input side. The RCA connectors again, the CRV doesn't come with any preamp outs, and you, it's not an easy replaceable, easily replaceable head unit. I mean, some functions in the car are not incorporated into the head unit, so instead of messing with that, it's easier just to get an amplifier kit that's easily integratable. The factory fuse, um, well, the their fuse, and then you got the rubber here that's supposed to keep the mic on top of your headrest. So I'm going to go stick this in. I'm guessing it should only take me about an hour or two at the most. There's not really much to it. The hardest part really for me would get that um, power cable through the firewall. There is a rubber grommet. The last time I, um, what I found the easiest thing, on, at least on my Honda, from the inside, get a bamboo skewer, tape your power cable to it, and just run it through. Pull it out the other end. And then, you know, cut 
Cut as needed. Wire it up. Um, I guess that's all to it. So I'm gonna go stick this in, and then I'm gonna be back and show you what this thing sounds like. Um, thoughts? I'm impressed. Very impressed. So. If I had a higher end, I've had higher end systems in my pickup, and it took us hours to tune it. All right, this took five minutes, hit a button. It's not as sensitive as you make it sound. You do want it fairly quiet, but I mean, you know, if a car drives by, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna feel, you know, very loud music or something. The sound right now sounds like it's coming from just above the air vents which before you know you got to hear the separation left and right now it's actually coming from the air right above the air vent it didn't biamp it once again it's a little above my skill level two things i'm going to tell you for the setup do not set the compression or the crossover until after you have done the the auto the auto eq setup it will automatically fail if you do it's not as sensitive um to sound mostly bass i mean my you hear my dog barking because you know he's just being miserable and I didn't stop it from EQing. What did stop it from EQing was I had um, compression turned on. It failed every time. It gives you the beep saying a speaker was missing when there's nothing wrong with my speakers. Right now it's literally, well, car's still a mess. It's literally underneath the cup holders, um, horizontally mounted. I use quite a bit of foam tape. All right. I had to lift it off a little bit. I was a little worried because there is a AC duct under there. I saw a little bit of condensation on it, so I have it raised above it. It's quite cool in there, so I doubt that thing's gonna get too hot. Um, once again, the key, it gets warm. I, I, I'm in the tropics on a right-hand drive, and that key gets a little warm, not hot, which is surprising. Right. It's bass response is what I found was the biggest improvement. Now, before I was using the DSP flat um, script uh, on my Honda Hack unit, I have it turned off and it's still EQ'd the same way. Right. It's actually quite impressive. And I'll be honest, if I knew the key was going to do this to the CRV, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have needed the subwoofer. Right now, the subwoofer makes a nice, beautifully nice fill right so the whole car um, feels balanced now right time correction feels again it sounds like it's coming actually it sounds like it's coming from um, my other phone which I have it mounted up there the sound sounds like it's coming from right there once it was finished a little high but when you're driving it's like in almost a perfect spot right the it's horizontally mounted the side panels there underneath um, the console there, they come off very easily. You just need to grab onto it, pull it out. Um, getting them in is actually harder. Um, once I got these diamond car mats locally, um, they fit nice, they look good once well, once I clean it up. But more, the way they fit underneath there, kind of a pain when you're trying to put everything back together. But other than that, not a big deal. So, any questions, feel free to ask. Once again, I'm pretty impressed with the unit. It's only like I got it on sale at Crutchfield, for like 220 bucks with the install kit. Um, everything went well. Um, don't know what else I can really say about it. You know, the bass response is beautiful. At least with these Morel speakers. So, if you want me to play it again for you? Just give me a minute, and I'll let you hear it with a couple different flavors of music. If you want to hear something else? Just send me a DM, and I'll play it for you. Plus student. Oh, no, right now, looking for your love. 